Uh, very interesting. So Joy and I had talked about this. I took the Brewers at nine to one to win the series. Alex Rodriguez <laughs> is joining us, and they can't score. There's a lot of different topics. They're freaking out in Los Angeles because the wind blew all the home run balls back into play, and the Dodgers are on the precipice of losing. So Alex Rodriguez, 22 years, uh, 14-time All Star, World Series champion. Let's start with this. So let's talk about the game that's going to be right at, at, at 45 minutes from now. Mm-hmm. We're going to get the Astros, and a lot of people don't like them, and the White Sox. Now, mm-hmm. one of the White Sox pitchers, Ryan Tapera, comes out and says, they're stealing signs. They're mm-hmm. stealing signs. What do you make of his claims? Well, I, first of all, I think you have to know your audience, right? They got smoke game one and two. They played really well in game three. They had the blackout. Great, great fans in Chicago. But you have to understand who your audience is. These guys are good, and this is the fifth time – they will be going to an ALCS. And don't forget, Colin, they, are, they have a little bit of the 1980s Al Davis Raiders. The, the Astros? Us against the world. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, just win, baby. Like, these guys don't care. They enjoy being the villain. Okay. So I, I want to talk about It's very interesting. So when the Yankees lost, you got to fire Aaron Boone. And my criticism as a casual observer of the sport is, well, timeout. You spent a fortune on John Carlos Stanton. You already had him. It was called Aaron Judge. So you you duplicate your strength, but you don't do a lot of other things mm-hmm. well. Run the bases, for instance. Mm-hmm. You're very home run dependent. And yet the Rays, who have no payroll, mm-hmm. okay, get about as far as the Yankees every year. Mm-hmm. So how is that possible? To me, I mean, you give me the answer. The Rays and the Yankees are both disappointed on the ending. One spends two hundred million. One spends what do they spend? Fifty? Yeah, sixty. Sixty. Uh, but 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 to me, the sixty million dollars uh, is more like two twenty. And I'll tell you why. They over-index in four things: speed, defense, baseball IQ, and passion. This is the Rays. This is the Rays. Now, all four are either free, or you can get it at the flea market almost for free. Right. But ironically, these are the things that make you win games. The Yankees have gotten Stanton, they have Judge, and Gallo. All three similar players, all three over six foot five, right? What they need is the Verdugos, the Kike Hernandez, the Vasquez. They need baseball players and a diversified set of skills. But ironically, the things you need to win a world championship are the cheapest. You can buy them at the flea market, and analytics has a blind spot, humans have a blind spot. Alex Cora has figured out a way to bring the hybrid and do it better than anyone. Let's talk about the Red Sox. So they lose the opener against Tampa. Now, this was a big surprise. A lot of people, a lot of baseball people I rely on, thought the Rays could sweep mm-hmm. the Red Sox. What happened? Even Boston diehards were a little surprised by the outcome. What happened and what's the story on Boston? Well, first of all, I, I, you talk about Massachusetts, who has a great history of coaches, going back to Red Arbach with the right. Celtics, Belichick, and now Alex Cora. If they win a world championship... They're going to have to build a statue next to Big Poppy. But if you think about this season, this was a team that a year ago was in last place, and they were not looking good. Then they go out and get swept in the first three games of the season against Baltimore, and everyone goes, oh, here we go again. Right. Then they get swept the week before the season ends against the Yankees, and then you go, they're done. Yeah. And then on game 161 on Saturday, they're down 5-1 to one against the Nationals. They bend, but they don't break. And Alex Cora, while he loves analytics – he understands that clubhouse as well as anybody, but he understands how to get people, communicate, and get them to elevate. And by the way, when you have a guy like Chris Sale warming up in the ninth inning, is because he's got everybody's buy-in from the 26 players, coaches, and the fan base. So the Dodgers top to bottom look like to me to be as talented, again, just talent, uh, from the Buellers uh, and, and the Kershaws, then they add Max Scherzer, they add Trey Turner, Seeger, uh, Justin Turner's the heart and soul of the team. And you think to yourself, Mookie Betts. And then they have a series of injuries over the years. Max Muncy gets hurt late. You think they'll be fine, they'll overcome that. But what I'm noticing with the Dodgers, it's so feast or famine at the plate that y- you get six runs or you don't get any. Uh, Bellinger, by the way, very similar kind of player. Mm-hmm. You you get great nights or he disappears. Mm-hmm. Um, it's almost an all-star team of great players. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's Hall of Famers on this roster. Mm-hmm. And they're a game from being eliminated. And most believe the Giants don't have the personnel. Have we undervalued San Francisco and simply overvalued the Dodgers' performers? Well, for sure, we've all undervalued San Francisco. I mean, they are not good. They are great. 
and they've been great for six months. Nothing tells us that there was a sign of slowing down. When we thought they were going to slow down, they sped up. So they have it all working up there. They have veteran players. They have very analytics-driven, but they have veteran players that are old school. Buster, Crawford, right? They, they, have, they know how to win. That's one. Number two with the Dodgers, the Dodgers, there's two things. It is so difficult to repeat. There's a reason why only a handful of teams have ever done it over the last century. Why? It, it's just that the hangover is real. When you go to the offseason, you go into this offseason banquet. Everyone's celebrating, telling you how great you are. It's hard to go out and run the 40s and the 60s in condition. By the way, condition. you also play 25 more games. There's fatigue. Absolutely fatigue. And in a town like L.A. or New York, there's a lot of people say distractions. I call them attractions, right? There's a <laughs> right. lot of attractions in L.A. Now, what I will say is this, the Dodgers are minus five. And what I mean by that is you have Kike being big poppy in Boston. You have Peterson running a three-run homer last night. You have Bauer's situation. He's out. He's a big part of this team. And then you have Bellinger that's been hot and cold this year. And now you get Muncie. It's not just Muncie. It's Muncie plus four. And when you take five big characters away from a 26-man roster, you got a different team. Yeah. Do you, um, do you think they can overcome it? I don't know who's, who's going because Scherzer goes. Who goes for the Dodgers now? Do you like their chances going forward? They're at Dodger Stadium. The win last night was a huge factor. So I watched a lot of NFL Bits and pieces of the Dodgers. This morning, I watched the highlights, and I read what Dave Roberts said. He said, listen, we had like two balls that were blown back in. The weather's cooled down a little bit today. The, the wind's not as uh, brisk. Your thought going forward on the Dodgers? Yeah, last night, they should have won that game, and they had the misfortune to play a home game that acted more like a road game. Because last night, Dodger Stadium felt more like San Francisco Stadium. Cold, it windy. was cold, windy. Right. And that ball in the end, I mean, that ball, if it was summertime, was 15 rows up. Right. Um, but I do think, look, these guys are champions. They know how to win. I think if you're San Francisco, just step on their necks. If you're the Dodgers and you win today, I think they'll go win game five over there. So San Francisco should close today. Uh, Braves, Brewers, Brewers suddenly can't hit. I guess that was the Brewers issue mm -hmm. all year. They, had a, they have a great closer. They had good starters, great pen. Milwaukee uh, was an interesting long shot to bet on because they had matched up well with certain teams. Pitching in the playoffs is is seventy five percent of it, but now they can't hit. Does Atlanta wrap it up? Yeah, first of all, I think when when teams come hot and cold, these teams are built to do just that. You know what won the game yesterday for the Red Sox? Going back about little baseball, is Vasquez gets a little ground ball with eyes. Then you have a bunt. Analytics tells you don't bunt. Alex Cora bunts. <laughs> right. Then you have an error, and you have a three hundred foot pop up that wins the game and takes him to the ALCS. <laughs> Everyone says I don't want to bunt. Analytics. Arch, angle, launch. This. But when all the marbles are on the table. It's situational. Everybody goes back to old school fashion baseball. Now you want to bunt. But guess what? Most teams are not prepped to bunt. So in a weird way, they rather lose their way than win the old fashioned way like Alex Cora did last night. Well, you love sports. I mean, you were a great high school quarterback. You and I have talked about this. You're a sports fan. And this has always been my thing on analytics. Postseason basketball, baseball, and football are situational. Mm -hmm. So in the postseason, let's take basketball. The last three teams that have won it have been the Bucks, the Raptors, and the Lakers. Two couldn't shoot threes, but they were all old physical teams. Mm -hmm. And refs in the NBA, as you know, mm -hmm. swallow the whistles in the postseason. What mm -hmm. does that do? It benefits big, old, strong veteran players. Yeah. They push the kids around. Yeah. So the game changes. It's not a Tuesday in Denver in the regular season. Mm -hmm. So baseball, you shorten your staffs. Mm -hmm. You use certain base runners you wouldn't. You don't take chances you would. So in baseball, it becomes very situational. Can you lay down a bunt? Mm -hmm. Can you pinch hit? Can you go first to third? I mean, you, you could ask Scherzer to go pitch the seventh inning That's right. in game five. That's right. And so to your point, I, I will say this. I think baseball is having a little bit of a renaissance. There's a lack of activity, which can turn off some young people. Mm -hmm. But there are... The game's never been more global. Mm -hmm. There are a ton of stars. The sport's done a good job to let guys celebrate yes. a little more. That's something Joy and I have been on. It's like, love it. It's this, you know, this is fun. Yeah. This, this is sports. Your takeaway on where the sport is today. Well, I, I could not agree with you more. Look, I think uh, when you look at Rob Manfred, Petiti, Dan Halem, they've done a fantastic job, along with Tony Clark, the head of the Players Union. Uh, I love what they've done in the All Star game, I love Homer and Derby. I love the 162. Every game starts at 3 p.m. So they're starting to be a little bit more progressive, learning from the NBA, learning from NFL. Yeah. But I do think the game, I've followed it for 30-plus years. I've never seen a better group of young talent. Oh, it's amazing. From Tatis to Soto to Acuna. I mean, just go on and on. 
And by the way, we don't talk about the Trouts anymore, right? Because they're 28, 30. But we're now talking about 21-year-old rock stars. It is so fun to watch. This guy, Tatis, he's like LeBron James. I mean, he is an international global star. And he's a guy that could have played safety in the NFL. He could have played point guard in basketball. But he chose to play baseball just like Aaron Judge. What do you do uh, as a former Yankee? A minute left. Um, we both know Aaron. I, I really like Aaron. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's a USC fan. So I, yeah, we're close. <laughs> so, so what do you do? I, they're leaning. They're going to retain uh, him. What, what, what would you do with Aaron? I would give him a three-year extension. Aaron Boone did a fantastic job. If anyone thinks that Aaron Boone has anything to do with the Yankees' failures, they're wrong. I, I met with a front office, and they said, we had, 30, we had a wild card game. We had 30 people around the table making a lineup. What do you need 30 people, analytics people? What are you, a hedge fund? You're making a $2 billion bet? You're making a lineup. You think Joe Torre had 30 people around the you – know, and I'm not saying it was the Yankees, but it was a team like the Yankees is too much thinking. You know, you take half the IQ, you can throw it in the ocean. Go back to Manny Ramirez, just plays baseball, see ball, hit ball. You got to be able to compete. You got to be athletic. You got to play defense. It's not softball. You don't put a right field and left field and a shortstop at second. Jeter was a shortstop. I played third. Cano, Tixera. Everybody knew where they were. Every place. You go to work every day, you're here. Imagine if Monday you're here, Joey, you're here on Tuesday, Wednesday you're here. Oh. That's what baseball is. No, no, no. You that know your spot. Work. Joey and I would be fighting like cats and dogs. <laughs> <laughs> like most teams are All right, fighting. Dodgers, thank you for the staff here. Dodgers haven't announced a starter tonight, so TBD to be announced. All right, uh, TBA. See you soon, Alex Rodriguez. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.